On March 12th, I sat down to interview Executive Intelligence Review's Will Wirtz, the author of the fact sheet on Obama's alliance with al-Qaeda in Libya, and the more recent book review on the Saudi role in the original 2001 9-11 attacks. This interview was conducted to provide additional ammunition in the fight to release the redacted 28 pages of the 2004 9-11 congressional inquiry, pages that were suppressed by both the Bush and Obama administrations for strictly political reasons. The release of the classified 28 pages of the 9-11 Commission report is a critical flank in exposing the post-World War II dirty ops secret war apparatus operating inside the United States government and currently fostering the conditions worldwide under the cloak of the initial 9-11 attack, which now threatens to escalate into a global thermonuclear confrontation. It's entirely reasonable to conclude that the release of the 28 pages will reveal the role of the government of Saudi Arabia, which colluded with multiple administrations in Great Britain, as well as the weapons giant BAE Systems and elements within the United States itself, in launching a military attack on two American cities on September 11, 2001. That military attack by those powers was a pretext to engage the United States and NATO in an 11-year-long war in Afghanistan, resulting in tens of thousands of civilian deaths and over 3,000 deaths of coalition forces. Extrajudicial renditions, torture, and spying on American citizens was justified by that attack. That act of war was used to the benefit of Tony Blair to induce the U.S. and Great Britain to go to war in Iraq from March 2003 until December 2011. The war in Libya and the U.S. alliance with al-Qaeda forces in the Libyan Islamic Fighting Brigade was a consequence. The use of drones by the executive branch to murder American and non-American citizens abroad has no legal grounds except those grounds established in the wake of the military attack on the United States on September 11, 2001 by the Saudi Arabian government, Great Britain, and elements within the United States itself. The release of the 28 pages will bring this to light, and perhaps much more and eliminate the cover under which these continuing anti-constitutional actions are taking place. All right, Will, you just wrote a book review for the LaRouche Pack website and for Executive Intelligence Review titled Philip Marshall, author of The Big Bamboozle, Dead, Was It Murder? Time to declassify the 28 pages of the Joint Congressional Inquiry on Saudi involvement in 9-11. So could you tell us a little bit about what you uncovered in the course of reviewing this book? This, this, uh, this book of uh, Philip Marshall's uh, has, has weaknesses, but its strong point is that it, uh, I think it makes a very good case for the, the need to uh, declassify the 28 pages and get at the bottom of the Saudi involvement. In 9/11, the first 9/11, and and uh, and what they're doing right now. In in terms of of uh, what was done in Libya and what and what is being done in uh, now in Syria, uh, you know this this is this is really crucial. I th- it's one of the most crucial things that can be done um, by the U.S. Congress today. Philip Marshall is a very unique individual, or was. Uh, he has about 20 years of experience as a pilot, a captain, uh, flying Boeing uh, jet, uh, jet, commercial jets, 747s, 757s, and, and an array of other Boeing planes. Uh, he also had some experience back in the 1980s when he worked as part of a DEA sting operation against uh, the Colombian drug lord Pablo Escobar and was also a pilot for Barry Seal, uh, who was deeply involved in the Iran-Contra operation under George Bush Sr. and Ali North before he was killed in 1986. Uh, I say uh, was in respect to Philip Marshall because he was found dead, I believe, on February 2nd of this year after having published this book last year. And he had indicated to some associates that he was planning another book, uh, which would be an even bigger bombshell. Now, what's significant about the book 
uh, well, let me just say, and of course, local police have said that this was a, uh, a murder-suicide because his two teenage children were, were found dead as well as their dog. Uh, and, uh, but Wayne Matson, uh, who is a former National uh, Security Agency uh, official, went out there and investigated the uh, crime scene for eight days, spoke to associates of Philip Marshall, uh, the police and others, and determined that, in his view, this was, in fact, a murder. Uh, now, the significance of what he does in this book uh, is that he exposes the fact that uh, the pilots involved in the 9-11 terrorist operation uh, could not have conducted that operation based on their alleged flight training in single-engine airplanes, uh, but that it would have required uh, uh, help from uh, aviation experts to teach them how to fly a Boeing 747 or a Boeing uh, 757. And uh, he indicates that as, uh, as, as such a captain himself with 20 years experience, he would find uh, the maneuvers that they engaged in to carry out the 9-11 terror attack completely challenging. He could not himself have done that without experience in training on such a plane. So that raises with him uh, the question of uh, how was this done? And he suggests that also because all of the hijackers did not speak uh, English, they, they spoke Arabic, that this would have required training, in his view, uh, from Saudi Arabia. And uh, he points to the fact that four hijackers in the summer of 2001 traveled to Las Vegas. And the only four hijackers who traveled to Las Vegas were the four pilots. Uh, and then he concludes that, uh, that they must have received uh, a final stage training uh, somewhere between Tucson, Arizona and uh, in Las Vegas. And he uh, discovered a particular air port in that area called Pinal Air Park, which at the time did have Boeing 747s and, and Boeing uh, 757s available. And it is an, air, is an airport that apparently uh, the CIA and also the private mercenary company uh, Blackwater uh, are known to use. Uh, he also points out that uh, in the period at, immediately after uh, S September 11, 2001, uh, there were three planes that left, com commercially chartered uh, planes, chartered planes that left Las Vegas carrying something in a range of 100 Saudis, uh, including Prince Turkey, uh, who was the, uh, uh, the head of Saudi Arabian intelligence up to approximately 10 days before 9-11. Uh, and uh, his argument is that this, the fact that these individuals were there in the Las Vegas area over that period before September 11 uh, and then during it uh, would, would be a perfect cover for bringing in aviation experts who could have given these four pilots training, uh, he believes, perhaps in the Pinal Air Park. Now, you mentioned in your book review that one of the things that Marshall leaves out of, uh, of his investigation is the role of uh, the British in the 9-11 operation. And what we've exposed is the role of the British uh, aerospace company BAE Systems and a deal with the Saudi Arabian government to trade to trade oil for arms, and what we've exposed is the money uh, that came through the arms for oil deal between the Saudis and the British created a slush fund that was ample enough to do to conduct the funding uh, for uh, flight training, for the housing of terrorists, for right. all sorts of operations. Uh, leading into the 9-11 attacks. Right. Uh, 
he, he does not deal with this aspect of it. He focuses primarily on the Saudi involvement at, in terms of the operation itself uh, and the Saudi connection to the Bush family. Uh, now, uh, however, uh, it's, it's very easy to see that, in fact, uh, his, his omission doesn't detract from his argument. Uh, you just have to add uh, this element to understand exactly what was going on here. Uh, the, uh, as you indicate, uh, a sl large slush fund was put together as a result of the uh, Al Yamama uh, deal between BAE of Great Britain and, and the Saudis. And uh, the Saudi ambassador at, at the time in the United States was Prince Bandar. Uh, Prince Bandar, in his official biography, in autobiography, indicates that he uh, got fees from this deal, probably amounting to $2 billion. So Bandar had uh, uh, access to, to a very significant slush fund that could be used to finance these kinds of operations. And as the uh, joint uh, congressional inquiry uh, uh, pointed out, which investigated 9-11, Bandar's wife, Haifa, who was the sister of the head of Saudi intelligence, Prince Turkey, uh, actually sent somewhere in a range, at least in terms of what's traceable and, no and known, fifty to seventy thousand uh, dollars to uh, what is regarded to be a, a Saudi intelligence agent who was operating in Southern California at the time. His name was uh, Al Bayoumi. And uh, Al Bayoumi uh, and another uh, Saudi in, in intelligence agent, Bassan, uh, both uh, uh, operated uh, with the Saudi Civil Aviation uh, Authority in, in the San Diego area. So they were employed by, by a, a, a Saudi aviation uh, uh, authority which is significant in terms of the training that uh, Philip Marshall believes they received from, from Saudis. And Bondar himself uh, was a pilot, is a pilot. Uh, he, is, uh, he was a top gun in the Royal Saudi uh, Air Force. Now these funds went to Bayoumi. Uh, and what the congressional investigation indicated is that Bayoumi uh, went to visit the Saudi consulate uh, in Los Angeles immediately afterwards went to a restaurant in Los Angeles and allegedly accidentally ran into the, two, the, the first two hijackers who came to the United States. Hazmi was one of them, and Midhar was uh, the second one. And uh, striking up a conversation with them, he invited them to, uh, to move down to San Diego. Uh, he provided them with housing with, and with other resources. And of course, he was getting money from uh, the Saudi ambassador to the United States, Bondar's wife, who is the sister of the head of uh, uh, Saudi intelligence. Uh, Bayoumi was also getting money from the Saudi Civil Aviation uh, Authority. Uh, so these are the first two of the uh, uh, 19 hijackers to come to the United States. Uh, and he facilitated every move that they took. Well. As you bring up the Bush Saudi connection, uh, could you could you go a little bit more into into that connection and how deeply it runs? Because in in your book review, you also uh, highlight some some of the older operations that even Bush Senior was involved in uh, with the Iran Contra uh, operations and so forth. And this this all seems to be a real a real uh, criminal den around around the Bush family and then also this Saudi connection. Well, exactly. Uh, uh, Prince Bandar started funding uh, some rather uh, nefarious operations far before he funded. Uh, uh, key figures in the 9-11-2001 in the uh, operation. Uh, for instance, it came out that during the uh, Contra affair, when the Congress banned uh, the White House from funding the Contras, uh, 
what happened is that uh, National Security uh, Advisor McFarlane went to Bondar, Prince Bondar, uh, and basically asked him to, to fund the Contras, which the Congress had, for, had forbidden the White House to do. So Bondar put up something in a range of, of $30 million. This came out in testimony uh, in, the, in the Congress uh, by Oliver North uh, back in the 1980s. So he funded the, the Contra operation uh, at that time, bypassing the intent of the U.S. Congress. Uh, and then what you see is, uh, so, uh, and of course later, uh, evidence emerged that, uh, that the Contras didn't just depend upon funding from Bondar, but they also uh, gained funding, funding by shipping crack cocaine to the United States in order to get uh, money to uh, fund their operations. Uh, in order, again, to, to bypass the, the constitutional, th uh, uh, constitutional decision of the U.S. Congress in respect to this situation. Uh, and one of the interesting things that uh, Phil and Marshall has in his book uh, is a picture that was taken in 1963 in Mexico City. And in this picture, uh, what you had was uh, Felix Rodriguez, a, a Cuban CIA agent involved in the Bay of Pigs, Later, he was the sort of the station chief in Honduras who was coordinating the, the uh, provisions for the Contras. Mm -hmm. uh, you also had Barry Seal, who I mentioned earlier. Philip Marshall had actually been his pilot for about a year. Uh, and Barry Seal uh, was involved in uh, the Contra operation uh, until he was later killed uh, in 1986. Uh, and the third person in that picture that Marshall identifies is Porter Goss, former Congressman Porter Goss, former head of the National Intelligence uh, 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 Agency, Porter Goss, former head of the CIA, Porter Goss. Porter Goss was uh, a CIA agent uh, at, the, at the time of the Bay of Pigs, participated in the Bay of Pigs. Uh, and uh, this picture was taken in Mexico 10 months before the assassination of Kennedy in, in Dallas. And uh, many believe that this photo, uh, which was made available by Barry Seal's wife after Barry Seal was murdered, uh, was a photo of something called Operation 40, uh, which some people have, have said was uh, either responsible for or connected to the Kennedy assassination. Now, what you find is that, as in the Warren Commission, uh, where Alan Dulles was appointed after Kennedy's death to uh, participate in the cover-up, uh, even though Kennedy had fired him as head of the CIA for the Bay of Pigs, among other things, uh, you find that, that the 9-11 uh, Commission and even the Joint Congressional Inquiry uh, were, had, had a bunch of moles who uh, prevented the, the good intentions of, of uh, the investigators to carry out a serious investigation. Uh, and in the, in the uh, joint congressional inquiry, you had Bob Graham, who was quite serious and continues to be serious in trying to get at, uh, to the bottom of the Saudi involvement of 9-11. But you, the, the co-chairman of that committee was the head of the House Intelligence Committee, which was Porter Goss, who ha obviously had every reason to try to cover up uh, what happened on 9/11? Uh, so this is so. The, the point I'm making is that the you know what you have is that the the Bondar Bush connection goes back at least to the 1980s, uh, and of course Bondar is now head of Saudi intelligence and is fund and is funding and arming Al Nusra and other Al Qaeda elements in in Syria, now working not with Bush but with. Oh, Barack Obama. Uh, and I think one of the critical things about this, this, this book of, of Philip uh, Marshall is that it really raises the issue of releasing the 28 pages that were classified as part of the Joint Congressional Inquiry, which deals exclusively with the involvement of Saudi Arabia in 9-11. Uh, Bush classified it so it couldn't be released. And uh, Obama, though he promised uh, the families of the victims of 9-11 that he would declassify it, 
uh, did not do so, has kept it classified, and has even taken more steps to protect the, uh, the Saudis, including granting them sovereign immunity uh, in the face of various civil suits which have been brought uh, by the families of, of uh, the 9-11 uh, victims. Uh, so this is this is a very dirty nexus that we're that we're we're talking about here in terms of the uh, Prince Bandar, the the Saudi operation, and 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 the Bush family. Well, what Bob Graham had said in, on the issue of releasing the twenty eight pages was that, in his opinion, there was nothing that was that needed to be classified uh, because of national security issues or anything like that, but it was strictly a political interest. Right. Now, a lot of people had simplified <clears throat> that and said, oh, well, the Bush administration and the Saudis, mm -hmm. that, that connection runs so deeply. But now we have, as you said, the Obama administration uh, working for the exact same cause to keep hushed the role of the Saudi monarchy in the original 9-11 attacks, 9-11-2001. Now, you also, uh, you're also the author of a fact sheet that, we've, uh, that we produced on the LPAC site and have distributed widely to members of Congress in Washington, D.C., covering the, uh, the operations, the dirty operations in Benghazi on September 11th, 2012. And uh, what you mentioned already is the Saudi funding of Al Nusra, right. which was a known a known entity in the September 11th, 2012 attack. Which, uh, from all evidence, uh, the United States is also working with, and from uh, and from available evidence. It would appear that the Saudi, the Saudi monarchy, and the uh, the other, the the other monarchies in the region, are currently uh, conduiting massive amounts of weapons into Syria. So, while there isn't, while there isn't the simplistic Bush Saudi connection, and there's no reason as far as national security, actual national security interests, why we should keep this 28 pages classified. What would you say is a political interest that has, that has overarched these two administrations? Well, uh, again, it, you have to look at the British-Saudi uh, connection uh, because, and, and the intent. I mean, this is a point that Lyndon LaRouche has made from the very beginning, that the, uh, the British intent, the intent of the British monarchy, is population reduction, uh, genocide on a global scale. Uh, the the, the you know, Queen Elizabeth and her consort have made it very clear that they want to reduce the world's population from 7 billion to 1 billion. Uh, and uh, one very effective way of doing that is thermonuclear war. And so this whole regime change policy, which was initiated really under Bush, certainly under uh, Bush Sr. Uh, and then uh, Bush Jr. has been, and which has been continued by, by the Obama administration under the uh, perhaps a little slightly different guise uh, of uh, responsibility to protect. But the same, it's the same doctrine of uh, denial of national sovereignty. Uh, which had been put forward by uh, Tony Blair back in also by back in 1999. So, so it ha it has nothing to do with uh, 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 left or right. It it, it uh, in terms of the political spectrum. There's there's a there's a, a British uh, policy, and uh, and just as Blair worked with Bush, and he now works with with Obama, um, and so what you see is. Uh, what happened in Libya is an extension of what happened in, in Iraq. And what's happening in Syria is an extension of this overall policy, uh, which is a British policy. And unfortunately, there are stooges in the United States who are, who are carrying that out on behalf of, of the British. And the Saudis are merely part of that uh, British empire. Now, in the case of Libya, uh, much of the uh, support for 
the, the overthrow of Gaddafi was actually coming from uh, uh, Gutter and the United Arab Emirates. Uh, but the, the point is that, that these, these Gulf states, these, these little uh, micro uh, entities, are merely an extension of, of, of Saudi Arabia. And what they, what they did is they, uh, uh, what they did is they, the opposition that they, that they supported was the Libyan Islamic Fighting Group, which had been a designated terrorist organization uh, and which in 2007 had officially affiliated with al-Qaeda. That's our ally against uh, Gaddafi. And as soon as that um, uh, overthrow occurred, uh, the, uh, this organization, the, Islamic, uh, the Libyan Islamic Fighting Group, then went into action uh, to uh, help in the overthrow of Assad. Uh, in fact, they, 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 there, there are... Uh, as of November 2000, uh, I'd say 2012, there were in the range of, uh, I'm sorry, this would be, two, as, as of November 2011, there were something in the range of 600 Libyan fighters who were in uh, Syria uh, fighting against uh, Assad. And these were members of the, of the Libyan Islamic Fighting Group, which is an al-Qaeda affiliate. The only, uh, so it's not just al Nusra, it's the, it, there's a whole array of al Qaeda affiliates in, in, uh, in Syria. Actually, Assad recently said that, that 75% of the border, border of Syria with, uh, with Lebanon is, is controlled by al Qaeda. Well, this has been the pretext for uh, not only the Iraq War, not only uh, that war, but for the ongoing drone policy and the policy of regime change is based on the events September 11th, 2001, our fight against al-Qaeda, and then the ongoing war on terrorism, which Obama refuses to call the war on terrorism because, oh, he wouldn't want to be associated with, with uh, those Bush leaguers. But this, this is the direct result of a, of a Saudi... British conspiracy with elements of the United States government. So you look at all of all of this that's actually occurred in in terms of uh, uh, sur wireless sur uh, warrantless surveillance, uh, the, the Patriot Act, the uh, uh, waterboarding, uh, torture, uh, the uh, and then the drone uh, killings. Uh, uh, of course, we've gone we've gone to war without congressional authorization be, be, before, but in this case, this is a perpetual war uh, that's being carried out without any congressional authorization. So all of this has occurred. It would all fall apart if you established that, in fact, uh, this was an operation in which Saudi Arabia played the, the critical operational part, and elements of the United States who have been response, in the United States responsible for bringing out this total uh, undermining of our Constitution over a period of essentially the last um, 11 uh, years, you know, that, that it would, it would uh, basically it would, it would uh, be the basis for bringing about a total shift in the United States away from uh, the, the current policy uh, under increasing British uh, domination. Uh, it would lead, uh, well, I mean, that, that's, that's what it would actually accomplish, I think. And, and, of course, it would be part and parcel of creating the conditions in which uh, you could actually get a, a change in, in, in direction of the country, in, including in economic policy. It would be part and parcel of, 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 of essentially reversing what happened with the, with the repeal of Glass-Steagall which occurred just two years before uh, 2001, uh, you could actually, it would actually be uh, uh, part of a process which, which would remove the terror, ter basically the terrorization of the, of the U.S. Congress and of the U.S. population such that you could actually fight for Glass-Steagall despite the fact that the British and, the, and, 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 and Obama and Bush before him uh, uh, don't want to have Glass-Steagall. They, they want to have a, a world in which... Uh, 
uh, you know, uh, bankers who uh, Wall Street interests uh, are never prosecuted, even if they're laundering funds, as HSBC was, uh, to Al Qaeda and drug lords. So this, it, it, it rep getting those 28 pages is crucial. And it would lead also, I think, to a, just a further investigation beyond what's in those tw whatever is in those 28 pages. There's also a CIA document, which is 16 pages long, which goes into Saudi uh, funding uh, of 9-11, of which has also been uh, classified. Uh, so uh, that's the significance of this. And you, you see with what's happened with Rand Paul's filibuster um, that uh, you, you now have the... Uh, beginnings of what Lena LaRouche had called for uh, back in September of, of last year during the election campaign, which is a process in which people uh, rose above so-called party loyalty. You can be a member of a party, but the point is that there's, we, have a, we, have, you know, we have a constitution. And you, have a, you have to have a commitment to that. You have to have a commitment to humanity, which goes beyond party. Uh, and that is what we're beginning to see. So getting these 28 pages... Uh, declassified uh, would be, you know, a along with getting all of the legal documents uh, uh, justifying uh, killing American uh, noncombatants on American soil, or killing Americans abroad, even uh, th this would this would be a total shakeup and make all all sorts. It would give mankind a, a hope of actually surviving and escaping thermonuclear war and being able to really put this uh, planet back in shape uh, economically, uh, which it hasn't been ever since the assassination of Kennedy, uh, and, um, and putting us in a position where we could actually defend the planet from you know, some, of our, you know, some uh, very tangible enemies like asteroids and comets, uh, which we have no basis of, uh, for defending the planet uh, from at this point.